Welcome to Watch Symposium, I'm Austin. And what am I doing right now? I'm getting air put in my tire. Actually, I'm putting it in myself. Um, there's a um, bicycle shop and they've got free air, which is kind of cool. So let's get that done. So the bike is all filled with air. Where am I going today? Well, I'm going to do some shopping. I'm gonna get some oysters to eat. Uh, it's oyster season here in Japan, and um, yeah, they're they're really good. They're really awesome. And uh, the place where I'm going, it's kind of like a farmer's market. Uh, you can get oysters there. I think for ten bucks for something like a kilo and a half. So I think I'm gonna get. Um, three kilos, so $20 worth. And, um, you know, I'm really, a week ago, I would tell you that I was the only person who ate oysters where I live, but my daughter, my older daughter is into them now. So um, she was grossed out by them at first and uh, tried them. Now she absolutely loves them. So every every oyster that I eat, she she eats half. I'll cut it in two and, and uh, you know, you put anything on oysters, right, I guess, but uh, what they do in, in Japan is ponzu, which is vinegar and soy sauce. It's really good. And you put that on the oyster and some lemon juice. And I, uh, yeah, I, I fed her one and, and she was hooked. So, so uh, that's why instead of getting uh, Ten dollars worth. I have to get twenty dollars worth because I have to account for <laughs> for her because she uh, she's into them now. Um, so, any what what kind of watch would you wear to get oysters? Well, I think it could be only one thing. It would have to be the Vostok. Now, actually, the reason I'm wearing the Vostok is because I went to swimming with my uh, daughter today and um, car coming. And, uh, I just don't really trust the locks there and you know plus I leave my key uh, to my locker unattended on a bench for you know like 30 minutes and I can't even see it now the chances of a person getting the key and going and getting anything out of my locker I, I look I really I could I could leave my locker unlocked there I really could but um, I just yeah, it just makes me uh, feel a little bit better when I don't have an expensive watch. So the Vostok is really good, and plus I kind of like to wear it in front of June, <laughs> too. Um, he was complaining because his watch doesn't work and he's still wearing it. And, uh, and I said, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of the best thing about a watch. You know, you always have the time at your, your um, fingertips or at your wrist. Um, so anyway, to get oysters. Kind of a cool little bridge here. Okay, I've stopped by this quaint little bridge and this charming little stream to talk to you guys about the idea of weekend watches. All right, weekend watches. Uh, a weekend watch would be something like a no date sub or a Tudor black base, something that doesn't have a date function. Now I'm wearing, as you guys know, the Vostok, which I don't think I'd call this a, a weekend watch. I think this goes more for the minimalist dress watch sort of vibe. But let's talk about the idea of a weekend watch. Now, yesterday I changed out the no date sub for the Explorer 2. Now I worn the no date sub for a month and I usually change watches out when I get tired of, of wearing one and I was not at all tired of wearing the no date sub. I mean aesthetically you guys know where I stand. I mean I just think that's tops aesthetically. 
how did I feel about the lack of a date function? Well, in the month, I, I, I tended to realize that the weekends were when I needed the date function the most. So, so first of all, the date function is just one of those things. Um, it, it's useful and the date is something you never know when you're gonna need. Uh, you can be out shopping on the weekend and have to fill out some questionnaire or form for some discount at some store and, and there you go, you need the date. And I find that on the weekend, you're less likely to know the date. If, if it's, a, if it's a, a weekday, say Monday, and I learn the day, the date, you know, really, I mean, it kind of sticks with me all week. And especially if you know that you don't have access to that function on your watch. I mean, it's kind of the idea of being mindful of things. And I think there's some sort of Buddhist saying like a man walks in to talk to a monk or something like that. And, the, and they're talking about being mindful and the, the, the monk asks him if he remembers how he positioned his shoes when he took them off to enter. And I'm probably, I probably butchered that, but the idea is to be mindful of things. And so when you write the date on a Monday, if you're mindful of it, you're gonna, you're gonna be all set for the whole week, date-wise, okay? The next day is gonna be the 12th, and, and, and the next day is gonna be the 13th. And really, having to depend on your watches is, is not gonna be an issue. So you have, I think, in a work environment, more access to the date, but also because you really are gonna be dependent on it, I think knowing it and keeping it in mind is not that much of a task. But the weekends are a different story. That's when you can kind of lose yourself and that's when, you know, you have a week long holiday on day five, what day is it? Now that's when a date function comes into play. That's when it comes in really handy. So while people often talk about a dateless watch as being a weekend watch, in a way I find that for long stretches of days off, that's when I really need to have a date function, okay? Because like I said, in, in, in a normal week of work, I'm aware of the date enough and it sort of comes up enough daily that I don't find myself looking down at my watch and needing it. But, you know, a week off or a month off, man, I mean, that's when you, uh, you really do need the date. And you might even need a, a day date, which is just the excuse you may need to tell your wife if you are looking for that precious metal Rolex. Those long holidays can make remembering the day just a real chore. And I think any woman that properly stands behind their man would support, if not insist, that they have a precious metal Rolex to get them through those months off. So anyway, rethinking the idea of a weekend watch. Let me know what you think in the comments <laughs> because it's good for the channel, that's why. Um, all right, we need to get some oysters. You guys, I have a little pet here. This bee is really into me. Where are you, buddy? Come back. I think I'll name him Little Simon. Thought about naming naming him Little Archie, but that's uh, kind of an insult.
All right, here we are. And this is, uh, this place is called Ito Sai Sai. It's just, uh, <laughs> I don't know where the hell I'm going actually. Okay guys, so on my way back I thought I'd stop here and make a little reaction video to a video that I saw earlier. Let's talk about new old stock, which the video that I'm referring to was a Adrico's video, Andy Hunter video, new old stock, NOS, and link in the description if you haven't seen it. He makes a good video and he sort of outlines the pitfalls and things you have to be aware of when it comes to a new old stock piece and you know, new old stock is something that is sort of a dream for a lot of collectors i think and dream for a lot of watch people i mean for me uh the idea of a gmt master 2 m serial number with the 3186 movement new old stock wow that would be that would be quite a find although boy you'd pay for it you'd You'd pay for those those uh, rare 3186 movement GMTs, even if it's just a regular, you know, used watch. But new old stock, yeah, that would uh, that would fetch some coin. Um, some of the things that uh, Andy Hunter said. Um, well, one thing in particular I thought was sort of uh, something that I don't think you need to be so worried about, and that's getting a new old stock piece that's not really new old stock. Um, now, I think you should be pretty aware um, of uh, the, you know, the, the condition of the watch, right? And, and obviously, if it has any nicks or if it's been overhauled, it's not a new old stock piece. And, and it's damn well not a new old stock piece if it's been polished. And that's something that Rolex can, can tell you if it's... Uh, uh, if it's a watch that they're willing to service. Now, if you were to get, say, a uh, GMT Master II, take it to them and ask what an overhaul would be, they would give you a quote and they'd tell you if it had been serviced and if it's, in, if it's been polished. And so that can give you an indication of um, whether it really is a new old stock piece. You know, for me, um, you know, if somebody were to call uh, a mint, 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 watch new old stock but they'd had it and worn it a few times as long as it's never been polished or serviced I I wouldn't really mind that much I mean yeah they they sh should probably call it used but you're getting the same thing I and mean, when it comes to new old stock what you're getting is a, a virginal piece and and a, a watch that's never been polished never been serviced and doesn't have a nick on it well, that's that's good enough for me. I mean, that's that's what I would want. And so, you know, you can call it new old stock, or you know, hardly ever worn, or worn three times, or you could call it anything. But that's the mintiness that I think um, really uh, gets uh, collectors, um, you know, interests uh, going uh, concerning a watch. Now, um, it really depends a lot also on. Um, on the brand, because if you're talking about a new old stock Patek, Patek's always gonna be able to service it. But if you're talking Rolex, that's over 30 years old, they're gonna likely turn it away. And 
And so even if you go in to ask them if it's been polished, I don't know if they're really gonna crack it open for you. Probably not, they're just gonna say this is too old, we can't service it, we don't have the parts, take it elsewhere. Um, if it's, uh, say, a 20-year-old watch, then they'll be able to service it and you'll be able to you know, get that quote and ask them about the watch um, and about some of its history because they'll, they'll be able to, to tell you something about it. Um, so you know, if you're talking a real like vintage sub, I totally agree with, with Andy that that's sort of a dangerous proposition because I mean, if it's over 30 years old, it's gonna need a service and Rolex is not gonna be able to help you out. So you're gonna have to take it to somebody independent and you know, you just gotta hope that, that they're not gonna have to get parts because if it's an old sub, you know, finding parts for it could be a real chore. And oh man, the last thing you want to do is get a new old stock piece and and have to put aftermarket parts in to, to keep it running. Um, I, I think, you know, likely if it's really new old stock, um, you know, you buy it, take it for a service somewhere. You know, if it's old, not Rolex, but somewhere you trust, and and they'll uh, they'll you know, re-oil it and put it back together and and, um, and uh, you'll still be having your pilot now. Um, well, so anyway, I uh, lost my train of thought. So, um, so yeah, I think it depends on how old that new old stock is. I think if it's something like, a, you know, 16710 GMT Master 2, yeah, man, you're, you're, I mean, Rolex is going to be able to take good care of you and 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 uh, tell you about the watch and service it and service it with with you know parts if need be. So yeah, um, new old stock, sort of a collector's dream, a watch person's dream. Um, but you want to make sure that you're going to be able to have a serviced and you always have to think about what am I going to do if they need to replace something and I think that's just the case with any vintage watch you know I was looking at, at this Explorer it's like a 34 millimeter Explorer they had it on Hodinkee in fact I'll, I'll send a I'll put a link in, in the description to that too and it was uh, it's on eBay and it was I, I watched the last 10 minutes of the the auction and it sold for 1800 USD a little over um, and I it was it was such a cool watch it had never been polished um, and it was uh, gold filled which I, I think is another way to say gold plated which yeah it, that kind of explains why it, why it would have been polished because I don't think you would really polish a, a gold plated watch but it had the Explorer label on the dial like uh, the Hodinkee article said it was more like a like a, a an Air King but you know to have that that sort of crossover between the Air King and the, and the Explorer I uh, thought that was really cool and I mean I can't say that I was really seriously thinking about uh, getting it and um, you know my wife was in the room too so I just you know but um, but I tell you if I was single um, boy I would have I would have thought Part about uh, laying down 2,000 uh, less than 2,000 USD for that um, again I don't really need another watch but it was just so tempting and so uh, it seems so unique and cool but what's gonna happen if uh, one of those parts wears out you know you just might have to get an aftermarket part and you never know when that's gonna happen uh, so that's sort of the the uh, liability in, in in vintage watches and and it, and, it, and it's something I don't really have to think about yet because while my watches are vintage I can take them to Rolex now you know in 40 years it's gonna happen I mean am I gonna I'm it's gonna make wearing my watches um, more stressful because look if anything happens in my watches I can I can have them taken care of but 40 years from now, um, that's not the case. So where am I gonna be then? Um, hmm, that's, we'll have to wait and see, but 
who knows maybe maybe I'll sell them all before then and and get something a little bit more modern although really I don't like anything on offer uh, that that Rolex has at the moment so anyway um, yeah new old stock uh, cool stuff but but uh, a ticking time bomb could be all right thanks for watching see you next time okay <laughs> okay are you ready so yes. what you're gonna do is you're gonna eat the oyster and you're gonna drink the soup together okay okay all right ready Yummy. You like it? Yes. You like oysters? Yes. Do you want more? Yes, please. All right. Say bye. Bye-bye.